We don't have the work to abstract this code. To connect to Mongo, let's do the same thing for the server. So we'll say listen server, which takes a server and does everything that we put inside of here. So we'll cut that out and return it with a promise. And just in case there is a port issue, we will wrap it with a try catch. And if we catch an error, we'll just report failure. Otherwise, as soon as she successfully listens, we'll report success with the server. But we now have a way to listen to the server, and we now have a way to connect the Mongo. Let's wrap the two together in something called startup. Before we forget, let's go ahead and export this out. So we'll say startup, and we don't know the parameters just yet, so we'll keep it blank. But the first thing it needs to do is return the promise from Mongo. So it needs a client and a URL, so let's go ahead and make those required parameters, the Mongo client and the URL. And when that is successful, it gets a connected DB. So we actually need, for now, a local variable here. So we'll create a, a DB to hang out there and catch it from the promise when it comes out. We'll say DB equals connected DB. Now that that's there, we can start listening for the server. So let's go ahead and return that promise. And it's looking for a server, so we'll pass that in. And when it's co completed, it'll pass us a listening server. And let's go ahead and return our own maybe that's resolved with both the DB that's connected and the listening server. We don't have to worry about the catch because whoever's going to handle the startup will handle the catch and it'll just go up the promise. So all we're doing is adding our own stuff on top of the existing promise, orchestration stuff, and wrapping it in a startup. So let's take this startup function. We'll export it out. And if you want to see it in action before we start unit testing stuff, it would basically be startup with the real Mongo client in the real Mongo URL and the server that we defined way up top. When it's done, it gets a connected DB and a listening server. So the DB we can set to the connected DB. Remember, if you remember this guy, we assigned him way up here. And the listening server we don't really care about, but we'll keep it there just in case. And we'll let the world know we are ready to rock the mic. Otherwise, if something blew up, which is very likely given how complex this is, server failed to start up. And we have a log. So this is how you use it. But now we can actually test the independent components. We've already tested connect to Mongo. Let's go ahead and test the listen to server. We'll import him. Do a describe. We'll do a should work if server is fine listening on port. Test the listening server. We need to give a server that has a listening function, which takes a port and calls a callback. Again, JavaScript parameters are optional, so our mock good server doesn't really have to name the parameters, but it's good for documentation to do so. So we'll do listen, report, callback, and the callback reports no error. And I forget what else it reports. It reports something with server name and URL. So we'll give it name and URL. Sounds great. So no parameters, just no error, no nothing. Let's go ahead and add this with a name of mock good server and URL of some URL. So now we have a mock that's good to go. We can test the listen server. And if we return it, since it's a promise, it should be fulfilled. Rerun our unit test, and we are good to go. We have a mock server listening to some URL. That's the log that actually came out from it. The next one is startup. So this composes both the connect to Mongo, decorates it with the fact that when it's done, it then does this afterwards. So it does it in order. So let's go ahead and test the startup, which is should be pretty easy considering the fact that it's composing each of those. So do 
describe. Should start up if Mongo is cool and server listen is cool. All right, let's double check our mocks that are required here. We need a Mongo client, which we can actually copy from the code elsewhere. And we need a good server mock, which you already created as well. Instead of putting these inside of here, we can either put them inside the describe or we can just go ahead and put them at the top. I'm gonna put them here for now, just so they're nearby. And then we've got a good Mongo right here. We can actually cut out. So let's put them here for a second, format it, and we'll just go ahead and format this guy and shuttle them up to the top. So anybody and their mom can use them if they so desire. Okay, so our startup also is a promise. So we'll go ahead and return and we'll say startup with the mock good client, which Mongo in some URL doesn't really matter, and the mock good server should be fulfilled. And so if we rerun our test using our good mocks, we know they already work because we used them in other unit tests. So we have pretty good confidence that they work here. Let's go ahead and implement some of these things that we've tested and clean up our REST API here. Remove all this connected stuff because we already know that it's connected. Go ahead and get rid of all the Mongo connect logic. All we care about at this point is doing a search. So our zip will come through, we'll get a collection out, we'll do a find, and then using the callback, we'll do a send. Our zip is for the zip code. Now this REST API doesn't care at all about Mongo. It's already there. We know this DB is ready to go. Let's go ahead and do an integration test by verifying that we've done it with real implementations rather than fake ones. Before we do that, let's open a new bash window here. We'll run our Mongo in this one. We'll see npm run mongod, which is merely just a wrap around the mongod command. And then we'll go back to our other bash and we'll do npm start now that Mongo is running. And we have a server working and a Mongo working. Let's go ahead and manually Test our ping, so our server's up, cool. Go to data, and our zip for Manhattan works, so we're getting our data back. Fantastic, so we've got a connected DB integrated in there. An NPM run coverage. We've got all 12 of our unit tests going down. Our coverage is a lot higher now. We run show coverage. Now at 82%. And more importantly though, if you look at the Git, the last thing left here is the actual collection search. So we've narrowed it down where we've got a significant amount of coverage on this kind of code here. And even though that this says the actual startup wasn't covered because of these particular parameters, we've already tested the actual startup function itself. So if you look here, he's got 100% test coverage on both successful and failing. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you compose maybes or compose promises, mainly through orchestrating a significant amount of input-output that you don't have control over, you can't depend on. So if you abstract it away into these functions here, such as connect to Mongo, listen to the server, very discrete operations that do one thing that's asynchronous and let us know if it worked. Then composing them together, you can add your own data on top, you can compose them together, you can put them in a particular order and write unit tests for that using simple mocks as well as start it up and feel confident it'll work because you've unit tested it. The only thing that can go wrong is the actual third-party dependencies, which you can write integration tests around those. So you put all the input output to the fringes of your application. There's only one left and that's a search and we'll hit him tomorrow.